Hello and welcome to a new episode of Let's Play Modded Minecraft. Um, this is the start of a new series. Um, I must apologize for my old series. Ah, oh, there's a creeper. We're going to avoid him. I um, must of all apologize for lack of updates for my previous series. Uh, I was kind of hoping that 1.7 would be out by now. Uh, well, it is out, obviously, but a lot more mods will be updated for it. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case just yet. So what I thought I'd actually do, rather than carrying on with my um, existing world, is just trying to start a uh, a new world. Um, this is on a monster pack, a FTB monster, and really trying to show you up, uh, show you the um, alternative ways of taking up, or of getting better ores and more technology and stuff like that. Obviously, I've got a tire Die Wolf Twenty series. I showed off uh, IC Two in there and. The thermal expansion and stuff like that. Um, I did a bit of a series on agrarian skies and all of that is to do with sifting and hammering and all stuff like that. Um, this series I kind of want to look a little bit more closely at rotary craft which is rotational energy and using that to tech up and it happens to have some of the best um, or extraction in the game, uh, in the game mods anyway, but it needs a lot of work together so this first episode, I've kind of skipped ahead a little bit. I'm not going to go and show you me digging a cave into the side of a hill. I'm not going to show you <laughs> me uh, hammering away at some ore, trying to get a little bit of ore to get going. I've already done that cave in the hill, and I've just moved to here. Now, if you don't recognize this already, don't worry. Well, that's kind of a hint. Well, not so much a hint, so much as a complete spoiler. Here, it's a roguelike dungeon. Now, if you haven't seen a roguelike dungeon before it looks like this you'll find them anywhere in the world but they look like a ruined stone tower i put some steps up normally that isn't there normally you enter at the ground level and you can go up the really good point about this is that it's already built so you've got a ready to build base but 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 down here and this is one of the things in monster you can keep going down. This is all pre-built, by the way. I haven't touched any of this. This is all by the mod author. And we get down to here, and this is where the first level. You see those spawners? They're all over the place. Dangerous place to be. And there isn't just one level. There's quite a few. You know, I've been down to four levels so far. I'm not sure if there are more. There probably will be, you knowing my luck. Um, do I have any spare torches on me? Yeah, I'll take that one. Uh, I don't have much spare on me at the moment, so I'm not going to go down here, but you'll find rooms in these with chests. Be careful. Um, some of them say chest. If they say trap chest, don't touch them. Uh, or at least not without trying to dig under them and find out what's going on, because I did, and a whole room blew up. So, uh, for the moment... Um, these are excellent sources of supplies, early game. Lots of chests. Just like um, in vanilla you have the dwarven mineshafts. Well, you even have some cake down there, see? Uh, roguelike dungeons, and there's another level going down. That's how I've been down four levels already, and there's some nether mobs even down there, so... Yeah, this is going to take some exploring. But its secondary benefit is that there's lots of corridors with rooms. Down there, I see. And down there. Which means it's really easy to build a base. I don't have to worry about building um, lots of infrastructure under, it, under the ground for power and all that kind of stuff. We can use it. Of course, I kind of like to be above ground for some of it. So, let's get started with something simple. Uh, we really want to get a good start this one because I don't want to spend too much time on the early game stuff. So, um... What we do want to actually do is create a smeltery. Uh, from there we are. Let's just grab all this stuff. I have previously built it at my old base. I'm just going to move it to the, my let's see set it up at the new base. And if you haven't um, used a smeltery before from Tinker's Construct, it's really not hard. You're going to need some sand. 
some clay, which is probably the hardest one to find, particularly if you're using ATG generation for terrain like this. Uh, it's, it's much more natural terrain. It's an alternative to bio, um, biomes of plenty. But the downside is that everything is more spread out, so make your own choices there. Uh, let's just clear some more of this. Okay, so once you have your sand, your clay, and your gravel, one of each in anywhere you like in a you know, crafting grid, and you'll get some grout. Cook the grout, and you'll end up with seared bricks, and you make these out of your seared bricks. So first one, just um, make four seared bricks in a two by two, and then controller, just make a ring with a hole in the middle. Um, I think it's that thing, that's the recipe. Um, for the control, and you'll get a book with all the rest. Uh, so, as I said, I'm not going to go into it too much because it's fairly common for these kind of series to go into that, and my other series also have a starting point for that. So, for the start off, I'm just going to create one quite simply. So, we want the say, bricks just three by three, and we can on the sides like this. Uh, I'm going to put a drain so we can pull stuff out. On the outside of that we're going to put a casting basin. Guess we can put the next bit wherever. Um, yeah, let's put it here. Turn a bit of a corner. Casting table. Then we use uh, seared faucet. Shift right click. Shift, shift right click. Come on, there you go. And that's the basic output. Now we just want. Okay, we want the tank. Oh good, that's retained what, what I had in it before. That's good. Uh, a couple of windows. You don't really need the windows, but it's nice. Controller. And don't miss. Gadgeted. There we go. If it lights up orange, it's ready to actually go. And in this case, we can just drop some more of these on. The more you build these up, the more capacity this thing has. So nine bottom nine second row that's 18 and if i had enough which i don't of course i don't uh, i can get 27 if i had another layer um why do you want to do that well just to get some iron cooking one of the things that rotary craft which is one of the as i said before what how we're going to tech up in this um this series one of the things in that is that it requires a lot of iron and if you've done IC2 and you thought that required a lot of iron, this requires a lot more iron. It's nearly all iron, in fact. Oh, there we go. And I'm, yeah, I've only got 10 iron ore, which is terrible. Um, that's nowhere near enough. So, I should make a chest. So what we're going to do is just cook up some iron. Uh, do I have the tank on me? I do. Look at... Let's grab some lava. Yeah, of course I can't with the chest now. Annoying. Right. After I stop derping, let's sleep and 
crack that chest problem with a toilet hammer when I find where I left it. If this wrench will do. Ah, there's the hammer. That'll do. If you haven't seen the portable tanks before, they're straightforward. I will show you another time how to make them. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to dump these in here. And this one we want, usually. So just right click on the controller and drop in your iron ore and gravel ore. That's going to melt down, turn into liquid. You can right click on these faucets or taps or spouts, whatever you want to call them. It'll drop into here, which will create a block of that resource if there's enough. If it isn't enough, you can right click on this one, it'll drop it into an ingot, which you can then grab and take away. That's a very, very simple introduction to Tinker's Construct, and I'll probably be making some better tools soon, which should give you a better idea to it. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, because obviously I've spent time on it before, and um, you know, leave a comment if you really want more and more stuff on Tinker's Construct. Uh, it's a very, very nice mod, but as I said, it's been covered a few times before. Um, so while that's cooking down... Um, Let's see. One of the first things we want to make in Rotary Craft is the handbook. Um, it's a guide to the entire mod. Um, if we take a look at that. Spell it right. There we go. Rotary Craft handbook. There's also a React Craft one. React Craft is an extension to Rotary Craft, as is Electric Craft. I would love to get to them. Believe me, I would. They are horrendously expensive in resources. Uh, if I get the, I consider myself to be uh, to be doing very very well. Uh, if you get to it, congratulations. Uh, you're probably better than I am. But the handbook, just six pieces of paper, a couple of redstone, and iron ingot. Don't worry, that's not the main use of iron. And I've got one around here somewhere. I really must sort these chests out. I have to apologise, I've just moved. Where's my handbook? Give me. You know, if I've passed it on screen and you've seen it now, and I clearly still haven't, then you know how much of a derp I am. Really, I don't have the handbook. Ah, handbook! Yes, there we go. Alright. Handbook. Basics of Rotary Craft. Alright. In fact, let me just explain this separately to the handbook. The handbook does explain it in complete detail, but it might be easier for me to, to give you an idea. Rotorcraft has a number of engines. They produce power. And power is in watts. We're talking... Rotorcraft tries to do this in very real terms. So you've got watts, kilowatts, megawatts, gigawatts. No, that's not gigawatts if you're a Back to the Future fan. Gigawatts. Um, God help us... You might be able to get the terawatts. Not going to go there. Probably. Yeah, probably. Um, but it produces this power in the form of rotational energy. So um, like um, an axle, uh, not an axle. Um, imagine a car coming from the back of the, the gearbox in the car. You have the shaft which rotates and provides power to the wheels. Now, in order to understand the, this kind of power, um, it, it, separates it into two separate separate variables. One's torque and the other one is speed. Um, just like in a car, if you're in a low gear, you want to move away uh, from, you, you select uh, a gear in your gearbox that gives you a lot of torque but not much speed. You're trying to move off a standing start. But if you're going about 80, 90 miles an hour, uh, yeah, legally, okay, so if you're going 50, 60 miles an hour, um, you'd select a much higher gear. A lot less torque, but a lot more speed. You get the idea you trade off those two 
and this this is what, what what the requirements for every different thing in the mod is looking for it's either a certain amount of a certain amount of power to get going obviously but you'll then have to select a certain torque or speed and um a lot of the processing in here will have a minimum amount of things but if you're going to provide it with more if you're going to shove more engines on it or if you're going to shove uh, more power into it it will um, produce things faster sometimes you had extra torque sometimes you had extra speed don't worry about it too much for right now just remember that if you have the torque you're going to double the speed in the, with gearboxes you, you have to trade off torque and speed um, to get whatever the minimum is for that machine and then you can just add more to it and see what comes out of it so the kind of starting point, a lot of these tutorials on Road to Recraft try to go through all the engines and then all the gearboxes and all the all the different ways to do things. I find that a bit dry, a bit um it's not it's not that boring, but I'd I'd rather get on and actually do stuff with it. So, you know, show you how to actually make things. Um so the first thing you're gonna need to do is get some lava. And I'm going to make this again, actually, because there's, there's no harm in it. Um, oh, yeah. You're going to need some lava. You're going to need a piece of redstone, and you're going to need stone bricks. So that's regular uh, cobblestone. Uh, you would smelt it, and then put two by two, and you'll get stone bricks like this. If you then make the stone bricks into a ring, Put redstone in the middle. You get a blast furnace, and unlike the blast furnaces you've probably seen in other mods, I think it is it Railcraft. I think it's Railcraft. Um, these blast furnaces are a much much earlier game. They're for converting iron. Oop, reminds me, iron into HL HLSA steel or HSLA steel. One of the two. I'll I'll see in a second. Uh, yeah. So here we just empty that out. Once we've got the steel, pretty much everything else in the mod is built from that steel, which is why you need a lot of iron. One iron will convert to at least one of the steel, but there's a huge amount of the steel that you're going to need. There you go. There's a block of iron, which is nine ingots. And I'm just going to grab another one just to demonstrate this. So, all you need is a bucket of lava, a place to do this, and I'm going to do this, it will do. Mm, now it's only one block thick roof, isn't it? Need a bit more than that. Yeah. Alright then. I have to lower that a little bit. Put your lava down. And then put your blast furnace down. Now, if you look at the top of the screen, you'll see it's increasing in temperature. It's going to get to a very high temperature. You don't have to do much with that. It's not going to blow up. Uh, other ones in this mod do. Uh, just put that in mind. Um, particularly steam engine. Don't usually love with that on its own. But the blast furnace, uh, it's just going to keep heating up. And if I open the UI, you'll see there's a few different areas here. Info on the left, it just links to the, the entry on, on the uh, built-in documentation. Temperature gauge on the left. Three slots, which I'm going to go into in a second. Nine slots in the middle, and then three slots on the outside. So if you take your blocks of iron, and let's just convert them into ingots, and spread them evenly in the center, if you look on the tooltip at the top, it says invalid or missing items. And that's because we, we've got everything in the middle that we want, the iron, but we don't have anything in these three slots. So here's where we need a few more ingredients. We're going to need coal, which I've got some in my inventory. We need sand, and we're going to need gunpowder. It's not going to use much gunpowder, so I don't think you're going to need a huge farm for it or anything. I don't think... I've got some sand. And now I'm just going to remember which slots these go in. I never remember. Um, 
I'm not sure it's something like... Thought it was something like that. Maybe I should actually get up to temperature first. Okay, so once I figure out the right, the right combination, this is going to convert the iron across into HSLA. Let me just find out what the right name for that is. It's going to bug me otherwise. HSLA. Yeah, into these. HSLA steel ingot, which we're then going to use to make everything else. Starting with one of these DC electric engine. If I hold the shift, it's one kilowatt, four newton meters of torque. Don't worry about the units, really. Speed is 256 radians per second. That's not the same thing as RPM. Um, it's two pi, uh, two pi radians in a circle, so that's about six, so over a minute. It's probably two and a half thousand RPM if you want to think of it like that. Just add a zero onto the end, it's roughly right, I think. But you don't need to worry about it, just think of the unit, ignore the units and just think it's speed 256, you'll be fine. That may sound like a lot, it's not, it's terrible. It's the worst engine in the game <laughs> for rotary craft, and it's there to act like if you've ever used a redstone engine, acts much the same. It's very cheap. You just need a lever, and I need to go and sleep. You just need a lever or any other redstone signal, and it will power on. If you're, you're going to use rotary craft, one of the things you're going to want to do before starting engines, unless you want to drive yourself a bit insane, is some wool. Or a sand muffler, or any other way of muffling sand, because uh, let me show you why it'll become very, very obvious. So, red's the output in the case of uh, any of the engines. Hear that noise? That can get really, really annoying. And each of the engines. <laughs> Once it stops, each of the engines um, has a different noise. They're all pretty irritating. They go away with distance, but at the end of the day, you may want to muffle them. If you do want to muffle them, just put wool here, here, and here, and it'll dampen the sound quite a bit. Why do we want a DC engine? Or what are we going to use it for? Well, here. What do we get on this one? Many of the um, different parts to rotary craft need lubrication, they need oil, if you like. And the way you would get oil is uh, done in a few different ways. Um, and we also need ethanol. Um, so think of that as petrol or gas or whatever, whatever you refer to in gasoline in your particular area. So to get those two different things, we're going to need uh, a number of different machines to get them. And the DC engine is kind of ideal for the first phase, the fermenter. Um, unlike uh, other mods, Rotary Craft needs to have the... Um, the power going into specific sides. If I just put this down, it's just going to look like any other mod. And that's usually people's first mistake. Often these will have a specific side that you can put power into. See? So this one only accepts power into the back. And if I drop the DC engine down, right away, it's now putting power into the back. But if I didn't do it that way, if I, I don't know, put it this way, nothing's going to happen when I power it on. It's not going to power this at all. 
so there's a tool like in most mods screwdriver screwdriver is just these uh, more of these HSLA and in fact it's even simpler than that I think yeah it is uh, that's fine okay so you don't need HSLA so if... So this, just like wrenches in other mods, you can turn it to face whichever direction you want. There we go. So when I power this on, and I'm not going to do it really until I'm ready to do it. Yeah, right click on the engine, doesn't do anything. It's going to provide power to this one, the fermenter. And it's important for the fermenter. Oh, got that the wrong way around. It's important that the fermenter's gauge be in the green. Now, this kind of depends on the local heat sources. You can play around with that. You can add heat underneath it and cool it down with fins and all kinds of other ways. Don't worry about it initially. All you want to worry about initially is just getting a little bit of, you know, I'm almost sure that thing's trolling. It is tro Wow. Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't just me. Fine, let's do it the... Yeah, there's a definite bug there. Not doing it now, <laughs> okay. Right, where was I? Um, yes, let me just try and remember what the recipe was for this, and I'm going to show it to you. It is largely plank material you're going to need in this. Uh, sugar canes is about the best in here. Um, so if I divide them in half, put some in the top, put it into sugar, and I think, if I recall correctly, it's just sugar in the top, dirt in the bottom, and water in the middle. Now that's operational now. It, that will work as soon as I turn the power on. Uh, let me just, where's my lever? Okay, annoying power. But you see the front lit up, and it's converting this across into yeast. I'm just going to turn that off because that's really annoying. Uh, there's no wool, by the way, uh, no sheep anywhere near my starting point. So, yeah, I'm going to travel a bit to go and find some because I don't want to have all you guys listening to that noise for any longer than necessary. Huh. Why is the yeast important, you might say? Well, you do another phase with the fermenter. Once the yeast is finished, I think I've got plenty here. Yep, there we go. And you can react it with sugar canes again, or saplings or anything really on the on the bottom, but again with more water in the middle. And it'll produce ethanol, it'll produce sludge, this stuff. You take your sludge and you put it into any um, furnace. Out of that will come ethanol crystals, which do I have some here? Yep, I do. And your furnace will come those. And these in turn can power the next engine up. The next engine up is, well, one of the next engines up. It's called the gasoline engine. And the gasoline gen engine is, well, let me explain this, that's backwards really. We want the grinder. The grinder th is the thing that produces all the lubrication from these canola seeds. It grinds them up and produces lubricant, which is used for pretty much everything in the mod that's gearbox related and all that kind of stuff. Um, so what we really want to do to start off is to make sure we've got a huge amount of lubricant available, or at least a decent amount of lubricant available. So. We just want to do this first couple of steps. First step to get some yeast, which we've got. Then we want to 
react sugar canes with yeast. And there's not much water. Let me just turn it on. Let's see if that will react. There we go, sludge. And turn that off. Um, do I have some wood available? There we go. So just drop your sludge in, just like anything else, and burn it. And we'll get these out. Each of these will power this gasoline engine. Just like before, this is its output. If you drop them in here, it'll power this thing for 60 seconds. There's no shutting it off. Don't try. Um, so it will cause a noise. I'll try and do this last so that you don't have to deal with that noise while I'm trying to talk. In front of that, just a bit of grinder. Again, green side is the input for these machines. So, output red that way. And you'll see there's a, a kind of hole on the side of the grinder as well, on the right side. In here, you can put canola seeds, canola seeds. It will convert across, and you will get lubricant filling up here. So I'm going to do that once now. You can just put a bucket in here, and when it's full, it'll fill with lubricant, which you can then drop into something like this, which is a portable tank. This one's full, so I may have to make another one or empty them into another tank. Uh, and you just want to make a little bit of that. That's, all, that's not too hard to actually get on with at the start. Now, while that's been going on, there we go, see, more ethanol crystals. We want to make sure we know how to actually make these. So, um, let's see if my blast furnace has warmed up. See, 621. It has actually converted them. I did get them in the right order. It's sand at the top, cool in the middle, good pad at the bottom. It stays at 621, won't get any higher, and it converts these across to HSLA C lingots. Those you're going to have to combine for your engines. So the DC engine, electric engine, the simplest one, just a few of those, one of these shaft units and two of these base panels. So let me just show you how to make those because they're, they're used pretty much all over the place. So you take your steel ingots, Find yourself a crafting grid. And three across the bottom will produce three base panels and three diagonally. We'll produce three shaft units. Already you can see I had a couple of blocks of iron. I'm already down to 18 and I've not even done anything yet. So as I say, I'll make another one. Uh, I'm just going to need two redstone. Oh, it's a work table recipe. Fine. The other thing is there's a special kind of crafting grid for um, rotary, rotary craft. I've already got one, but I'm going to make one of these as well. Now, uh, rotary craft. What am I doing? Work table. In fact, I'm not going to make them because I don't have the clay. Uh, so, bricks in the centre, crafting, crafting table at the top, some stone slabs and HSA, and you'll get one of these work tables. Um, most of the small ingredients are made in a normal crafting station. The machines, oh, I do have the clay, uh, the machines are made in the work table, which is its own special thing, which is here. So, if we just back to our DC by now shift click on the question mark for any eye integration 
all this gets pulled in from my inventory, just like you'd expect, and I get another DC electric engine. But now I'm down to 14 steel and base panels and shaft units. If we look at the gasoline engine, which is the next one up, Yeah, <laughs> if you're looking at that going, what? Uh, it's just more and more of this deal. So a cylinder is eight of those to get two cylinders, so that's eight gone. Ignition unit is another five, some gold and some redstone. Uh, these three you know about. The impeller is five of those, uh, this ingots. Then another four surrounding the product of that, which is nine, to make one impeller. And I hear a spider. Am I gonna get? Can I sleep through this? Ugh, of course, there's monsters nearby. Fine. I should be able to get in anyway. Oh, uh, what was I? Gasoline engine? Yeah. So we need the two gear units, which is more of those five steel ingot gears. You do get three from each one, but still. So two of those, two more shaft units. I want you to assemble all of that for a huge number of um, iron ingots converted to steel. You get a gasoline engine, which if you have a look at this one, that's a lot higher. 65 kilowatts, 128 newton meters of torque, 512 radians per second. Much, much better, uh, much, much more powerful. And it's the only, it's one of the first engines you can get that could power a grinder, which is the only thing you need to make lubricant. So, just while we started off with this series, best to just start with the very, very basics, which is just that. You want your blast furnace? Use that to cook up some iron. Your DC electric engine. Use that to ferment. So sugar and uh, dirt and then yeast and sugar canes or saplings or anything really at the bottom. Plant matter. Put some water in it and turn on the engine and turn down your volume. Or your audio volume. Then gasoline engine into your grinder. And from there you can get your lubricant. Next time, we're going to go from the lubricant. Uh, I'm going to look at how we're going to route that around to different place, different places as and when we actually need it. But for steps, just to get this process going, and then we're going to have to have a look at automating it because one of the things you need in this is, of course, the sugar canes to make sugar. So we're going to need a sugar farm and these canola seeds to make the lubricant. I'm going to need a canola farm. And thankfully, Rotorcraft has a very, very nice way using its own stuff to automatically farm things. It's got the fan, and we're probably going to deal with it next time. In fact, yeah, that's definitely going to have to be next time because we're just about to hit the wrapping up point. Um, once again, don't forget to leave a comment if you want to know any more about the things that I may have glossed over a little bit in this just to get us started. Uh, obviously subscribe if you want to see more of these videos and again if you want to see particular things in the future I've not covered here that might be in the monster pack yeah, Sunrise and a skelly uh, that might be in the monster pack feel free to uh, let me know uh, I'm Greyduster on Twitter and you can find me there once again thanks for watching I hope to see a new series let me know what you think and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.